Things that make me irrationally angry. Mushrooms. Technology. Technology designed to harvest mushrooms. Oh, and these very specific 15 things about One Piece. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today I am here to challenge myself because I am looking to express 15 things about One Piece that just make me angry. A very visceral emotion anger, one that's quite hard to generate, especially with a series like this, which I do love more than any other story, perhaps even person or thing that has ever existed. But maybe that's why it's possible to find these moments in the first place. Anger isn't really something that can be generated by sheer indifference, so let's begin with an example. Thing number the one that makes me angry about One Piece, the frankly abysmal use of death. I think this is a fairly universal complaint, but more accurately, I suppose I should say the use of fake out death scenes. All too often, a character will be given some sort of dramatic death scene, only for it to later be revealed that they survived, somehow. And I want to put some great emphasis on that word, somehow, because very rarely is it actually explained. And that's for very good reason, because Oda more often than not would not have a good explanation ready. He basically writes a character into a dead end where only one outcome is possible, then proceeds to milk that scene like some sort of ever bountiful dramatic teat, and then later decides that the whole death thing, well, that didn't actually happen. The character is alive and well, and he was just over here instead. And it's at the point now where I get annoyed when Oda even writes these death scenes because I know that nine times out of 10, it is going to be purely false drama. And that's the sort of thing you can expect to find on this list. So moving on to the second angry factor now, it is going to be the ongoing debate of Zoro versus Sanji. Although the word debate is quite generous. I'd actually say it's more akin to a global food fight. One side equipped with an arsenal of yellow things like uh, perhaps like lemons and spaghetti, maybe even corn. And the other side with, uh, oh, I don't know actually, what's, what's a green food? Um, avocado? Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Point is, it's a mess. And to be fair, this is not an issue with One Piece itself, where the Zoro versus Sanji rivalry is more of a fun, comical interaction. However, online, and even sometimes in RL, fans get into these incredibly heated, irrational arguments regarding who is stronger, who has the best characterization, and who gets the most units of respect and all of the other things that don't at all matter in this goofy, fun pirate manga. If you have ever gotten truly invested in a Zoro versus Sanji argument, just know that you have wasted valuable living time and you will never get it back. Third thing about One Piece that makes me angry, we need more Chopper. He is one of the most unique existences in the series, capable of great intelligence, fun comedy, and even pretty incredible action. And yet, he is mostly relegated to being a background mascot. And you know how I know that we know that we should have more Chopper? Because you can say the thing about most of the Straw Hats, especially post time skip, but Chopper is so neglected that he very rarely pops up in those conversations as well. It's usually about, oh, we need more Nami and we need more Robin, which is also true, but post time skip, Chopper is every bit as neglected as they are. As for a character who perhaps should have been neglected a bit more, the number four angry thing I have is that we need less of Treble. And I know that he's not too involved in the story anymore, but what we did get of him, well, that was already too much. The decision to construct a mucus man was certainly a bold one by Oda, and given his CV of bizarre characters, I was pretty happy to go along with it for a while, but Treble never really did uh, anything. He didn't really have a fight on Treble. Dressrosa either, there just seemed to be very little point to his existence in general. And the anime incarnation of Dressrosa only solidified my feelings when I heard Treble's voice for the very first time. <laughs> Continuing with the dress Rosa motif, though a very minor thing that does annoy me about the anime adaptation specifically is the sheer amount of times that they showed the Rebecca flashback. It's an interesting situation because if you ask a manga reader how many times they saw the Rebecca flashback, their answer will be once. Whereas if you ask an anime watcher, their answer will probably be something more along the lines of seven to 10 times, maybe more. But if you ask Toei Animation, then their answer will be not enough. If they could, I think they would have an entire channel dedicated to playing the Rebecca flashback on loop 24 seven. Let's do another common one now. Number six, the, uh, the female design template. The vast majority of female characters in the series inhabit the exact same tits on a toothpick approach to design. And I'm not saying it's a bad design by any means. You can criticize the, uh, the proportional issues and I may very well do that later, but body proportions in one piece are generally weird across the board. So we're going to give it a pass here. It's probably just a bit more noticeable in this case because we do see the same basic body type ever so often. It's not some something that is in any way series breaking, 
but I do find myself becoming quite bored with a lot of the female characters in One Piece. And this repetitive body type that gets recycled and reused for most new female characters is probably a huge contributing factor to that, although certainly not the only one. Now, the number seven thing about One Piece that makes me angry, delving back into the fan base side of things now, is definitely power scaling. If there is a surefire way to ruin what may have initially been quite a good conversation, it is to delve into power scaling. Your typical power scaling conversation tends to go a little something like this. Person A, I think that under the right circumstances, Charlotte Perisboro may stand a decent chance against Marco. Person B, person A is an effing moron. Marco is Yonko commander level one, whilst Perisboro is Yonko commander level 2.5 double D plus at best. You should dig a hole to bury your idiotic ideas and then dig another hole to bury yourself. Person C, person B was a bit harsh, but he has a good point. And that is my general experience of online power scaling discourse. But to wash that taste out of our mouths, it's time for a quick round of Joy Boy or Angry Boy, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. We are going to flip a coin and it is going to be your job to guess which side it will land on, either a Joy Boy or an Angry Boy. And should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, resulting in a consistent injection of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. And if you are correct, then well, you can keep the coin and add it to your collection you coin collecting nerd. But make your choice now. Will it be Joy Boy or Angry Boy? Let's flip the coin and reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, it is Joy Boy, because we need a bit of relief from this angry, angry video. But if you did guess Angry Boy, then you know the thing it is that you need to do, and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. Now, the eighth thing about One Piece that does tend to make me angry, however, is the complete and utter lack of bounty hunters, particularly because I love the concept of bounties. I think they're a fantastic fantastic narrative device to showcase both character and new character threat levels, but in world, they are more or less pointless because there is nobody, and I mean nobody, actually out there hunting bounties. Well, other than the uh, the abysmal failures at the lowest levels, like say Johnny and Yosaku, but think about it. Who is the most famous bounty hunter in One Piece? Well, that would be Zoro and he's not a bounty hunter. Okay, cool, so who's the second most famous? Well, that would be Daz Bones and he's also no longer a bounty hunter, so let's move on. Who's the third most famous then? And, uh, ooh, I don't I don't know, uh, Jeet and Abdullah? Which is great because as irrelevant as they are, they are also no longer bounty hunters. Nobody anywhere is a bounty hunter. The only people who go after pirates in this world are the Marines, and they also happen to be the only people who cannot cash in bounties. So look, I love the narrative device of bounties, but I really dislike the neglect of the bounty hunter concept. As for the ninth angry One Piece thing, that would be the critical mass of Tit. So I've done female designs in general, but the concept of breasts really do deserve their own special mention. Now, I'm not a huge fan service type of person, and I should say that Oda doesn't generally go too overboard, at least not compared to the One Piece anime where Bust is so out of control. You'd think there were some kind of sentient life forms rising up to take over the planet. All hail boob. And look, here's my general rule with anime breasts. If one breast is bigger than a character's head and three times larger than their waist, then that is simply too big. To number 10 now, let's talk about Haki. In general, I quite like Haki. I don't think it's the best power system that's ever existed in manga, but it is acceptable with just enough variety going for it. But what I tend to get annoyed, perhaps even angry about, is how Haki has completely simplified combat in the series. One Piece used to be about incredibly unique styles and powers coming up against each other and producing battles that we've never seen before and likely will never see again. Whereas after Haki, there is a distinct feeling of standard when it comes to One Piece fights, because many of them do essentially boil down to, well, my Haki is stronger than then your hockey, so eh. There is far less focus on strategy and technique, but with that said, there have also been some pretty great examples of the opposite, such as Luffy versus Katakuri, which struck gold with the right mix of hockey and creativity attached. Most post hockey fights, however, are not this. A number 11 will once again involve more of the fan base, but it's any time I encounter someone who is an almost religious zealot in regards to One Piece, the kind of person who rejects any and all criticism of the series because it is simply perfect, mm. and Oda is quite probably a literal god. Nothing in this world is perfect, and One Piece, as close as it may get, has a wide variety of subjective flaws and even a fair few objective ones. But the worst of the worst are the people who respond to that with, well, go and write your own manga then. Yeah. Also known as the worst comeback a human being can ever conjure. And I think it's important to understand that most One Piece criticism does not stem from a place of malice, especially not criticism that comes from fans. It's because we want One Piece to be as good as it possibly could be. And part of getting 
something better is recognizing floors, like this one. This is a timber floor. And here's a good floor in number 12, quite possibly the most complained about aspect of the One Piece anime, which is the excruciating pacing. So there's a reason why I don't review the anime, and yes, that may need rethinking in the Wano era. But there are times when I've been watching the anime over the past 15 years where it has made me legitimately furious. And it's because for the large majority of the New World era, it's just so damn slow. And we've all had this common human experience, right? You know the one where you're walking on a narrow path and the person in front of you is walking painfully, frustratingly slowly, slower than any human with legs should be moving, and you just can't get around them because, oh no, that path is so narrow, but you're well and truly ready to move on. Well, that's my experience with the One Piece anime pacing, except this walk has now lasted <laughs> more than a decade. But at least during this new Wano Renaissance, Toei have made that journey far more enjoyable by adding lots of fun things to look at. So it's a fun journey now, albeit equally as slow. And one more thing about the anime that makes me angry is reaction shots, which isn't to say they don't exist in the manga. It's always nice and arguably essential to know how other characters are feeling, but we don't need to know how absolutely everyone present on the island is feeling about every minor event at all times. And the worst offender of this is definitely the Marine Fidel, where every time something mildly important happens, the battlefield came to a complete standstill as we had to check in with the reaction of every Marine, every pirate, and every in between. So Luffy arrives at Marineford. All right, we're gonna spend the next 20 minutes in pure silence, cutting to the blank faces of every other character as they maybe have thoughts or not. However, the reaction shots are even put to work when there are very few characters present. You just have to keep cutting back to the exact same shots over and over to fill that time instead. For example, Luffy versus Urashima. In one clash of this animated extravaganza, we received five close-ups of Luffy and a whopping seven close-ups of Urashima, all of which portray the exact same feeling. This is not drama, this is not tension, this is not regular filmmaking. None of these shots produce new information, nor do they add anything of relevance whatsoever. It is filler, pure and simple. For number 14 now, may I present Sabo. Longtime viewers of mine will be familiar with my feelings regarding Sabo, and they have only become worse over time because he is a character that I just don't think belongs in One Piece. And one of the best descriptions I've ever heard of Sabo is it's like someone inserted their own original character into One Piece because on paper, Sabo's existence reads like fanfic. Oh yeah, so here's my original character. He was the unknown third brother of Luffy and Ace who grew up to be like a super cool member of the revolutionary army. He is like, Perfect. With a great design, a cool pipe thing, phenomenally powerful as well. So much so that he can even fight a Marine Admiral. Oh, and also he got Ace's powers because fire is cool. And there's a lot of irony in that statement because fire is not indeed cool. It's hot, very hot. I just don't think I'll ever quite understand the uh, the Sabo lovers of the world, but at the same time, I am certainly happy that he does have fans because that means that the character is doing his job, just, you know, not for me. And the 15th thing that makes me angry about One Piece is that at some stage, it is going to end. Yes, it's a cop-out answer, but it's true. The idea of One Piece ending is kind of terrifying because it's now been part of my life longer than most people I've ever known. So when the inevitable does happen, it's going to leave a pretty gigantic void. But to take our minds off the impending future despair, please do feel free to check out this playlist of some of the biggest controversies in One Piece. Some very fun stuff, so I look forward to seeing you there.